All right. Hey, uh, welcome to uh, week four of BSAD 111. I'm here with Todd Johnson. Todd is... That's me. If this is Todd Johnson. There's nobody else <laughs> yeah, there's, in the screen. There's you know? only us two. Yeah. Uh, somebody's standing behind, but you can't see that. Uh, so we're, uh, uh, we just finished having an interview with Todd in uh, the lecture class, in the in-person class. And what I wanted to do is just kind of give you a highlight reel of some of the things that Todd talked about in terms of his experience around... Uh, you know how his strengths developed both in uh, high school and then uh, uh, and then as well as that moved into college how those strengths influenced him and his successes within college and then how that also began to prompt him to think about how his strengths uh, would influence um, his career so uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time on that but I wanted to give you at least a a brief version uh, and just let you hear a little bit from Todd. So Todd, could you share with us what your top five strengths are? Okay. Uh, I get the order mixed up sometimes, That's but fine. I know self-assurance mm -hmm. uh, and I know competition are one and two, positivity, ideation. Uh, I've got... Woo's pretty high. Woo's up there. We talked yeah. in the class that he also has high belief. I've got some um, belief. You know, if, you're, if, if we've worked at Gallup, uh, you get the opportunity. Some of it rubs off on Right, it. yeah. And, <laughs> and if you've worked at Gallup, uh, you have the opportunity to not only see uh, your top five, but you get to go beyond that. And that's probably appropriate in terms of the number of years that we've been thinking about this. Cause, in you the know, old days, with, I can see intensity. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. right? So you, you've been with Gallup how long now? 21 years. 21 years. And um, uh, I've, I've been with Gallup 17, so we both have uh, quite a bit of history with the organization. And the entire time that we've been there, we've been But I have been strengths. there four years longer than exactly. you. Exactly. So, no yes, competition. competition is top five, so he wins that one, right? Um, so tell us a little bit about, uh, especially early on, let's, th let's think about high school, college. How did your strengths, uh, you know, when did they start to kind of manifest themselves? When did you start to begin become aware that these were things that drove you to, to be good, to be excellent at things? Well, I'll touch on the competition one. Um, I was uh, a soccer goalkeeper that uh, <clears throat> was very helpful getting me into Columbia. I, okay. I probably wouldn't have gone on straight on my SAT mm -hmm. scores. That was All right, so Todd, Todd uh, did his undergrad at the University of Columbia, New York City, and then took a break and then went back and got his master's at uh, the London oh. School of Economics. Right. Right, got his master's. And what I thought was really interesting, now that I'm, I just turned 50, so I get to philosophize and all this stuff, but as I look back, I took my, I was a wrestler growing up, I was, I was a soccer player, I was always really competitive in sports. I took that, that wiring, mm -hmm. that talent, if you mm -hmm. will, and I applied it from the field to the classroom to the workplace. Just not mm -hmm. consciously per se, mm -hmm. but mentors or coaches or, uh, you know, uh, people along the way helped me with that. Figured out how to leverage so, that natural, natural innate behavior that you had uh, in other areas. And you told a story, uh, maybe you want to, uh, if you could kind of, give us a short version or at least explain uh, how you talked about competition moving from uh, you played soccer in college uh, and then and then how that in kind of yeah, moved okay. more so in, into into uh, so, the academic realm. I don't know how far I don't know how far this goes but I really didn't like my uh, roommate's girlfriend okay. and she took and if you'd known her she was just mean right okay I won't use her name but um, she took a lot of the same classes and so I worked and she was really smart she mm -hmm. got in academic, uh, academically and intellectually. I got in athletically. And um, I really liked to beat her. And so I went to work in a lot of the same classes and ended up meeting that 4-0, that, that, that better than 4-0, uh, to beat her. And, and again, friendly competition. Mm -hmm. But I compete in the workplace all the time with colleagues. Mm -hmm. Again, friendly competition. The tide rises in competition. If you don't have competition, mm -hmm in business, you're in a lot of trouble. Right. So, it, so yeah, it just kind of elevates your, your, your level of performance, especially to match the competition. So sometimes you have absolutely. to look for it, you know, in order to, to, to keep that competition into gear. And, and you, you want to compete. I mean, I know it, it's, it's true athletically, but it's true professionally and intellectually. You want to compete with people mm -hmm. better than you. Okay. It, it gives you, your game goes up. So let's just jump real quickly. So <clears throat> your role now within Gallup is you're responsible for really a, a relatively new product. It, mm -hmm. it's, it hadn't been around for very long. It does not have a market to speak of except the, what, what you've built from scratch. We're creating, uh, and what's interesting is I am seeing other assessments. We study entrepreneurial talents, uh -huh. call it EP10. Uh, I'm seeing other ones out there, and it's great. And the yep. better they are, the better I feel about it. Yep. Because competing against nobody 
means there's not a validated market. Yep, there you um, go. So for him, uh, the ability to see a, um, you know, to see that um, that target out there, that uh, uh, someplace where they can, where Todd can compete, where he can he can see himself having the opportunity to beat that opponent. And, and I, I really encourage you, as you think about your own strengths, to identify those people, um, especially maybe classmates that you have, maybe it's a roommate, maybe anybody that you can identify that are kind of in the same realm you are, and, and maybe they're not even taking the same classes, but you want to compete against overall uh, for overall grade point. So uh, maybe you create a friendly competition uh, within with you know within your your suite or with your roommate to say, hey, uh, if I get a better grade point than you do, then you know, you owe me dinner. Yep, you owe me dinner. Uh, this is something that typically the fraternities and sororities, I think, do on a regular basis. They create a competition around that. So if you have competition, that's a great motivation in terms of that academic piece. For somebody that has learner input, which I think neither of us do. Nope. <laughs> um, Removed uh, at birth. It's, it becomes, it's much more natural. It's like, you know, I enjoy learning. It doesn't, I don't need the competition around it to motivate me. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have it, then, you know, this is an example of how you could apply a theme, you know, in a different setting might not be the one that you think of most naturally. I think typically competition, we relate it to um, an a a athletic endeavor, uh, oftentimes, or debate, or some of those others where there's this formal formal competition piece. But you can figure out ways to adjust it and almost use a particular strength as a proxy for another. And this is a great example of that. Oh, yeah. All right, so uh, we also talked in the class, Todd, about um, the engagement survey, uh, uh, the online students have, have gone through that. They're actually cool. they're actually doing the Gallup Purdue Index, okay. just like the in-person students that you just met. Okay. And uh, so they're asking these questions of somebody this week, and uh, got to have it done by midnight on Friday. And so uh, one of the questions that uh, uh, that they're asking of all these folks is, uh, have, do you have a best friend at work? And it's not a good friend; it's a best friend. It's a best that, friend, the word right? Best is we really qualified. important. We tested that. Um, so tell us a little bit about best friend. Yet. One on a scale of one to five, strongly yeah. disagree, strongly agree. Strongly agree, easy. And just everything's better when you're, by definition, it's such a simple concept. Mm -hmm. I've done some consulting on this question around the world, and the people that always fight that question are usually the people with no friends at work. Yep. So that's always just kind of interesting. Yep. You're more productive. Uh, all your outcomes are better when you're operating around your friends uh, in a positive way. Uh, uh, environments. Mm -hmm. uh, in retail, this is kind of maybe a little too tactical, but you don't steal from your friends, mm -hmm. right? right? Very fair, rarely do you steal from your friends. So in business, theft, where they call it shrink, is a really real issue, especially in retail where the margins are so thin. Mm -hmm. So some great companies around the world are trying to have more friendships, more best mm -hmm. friendships, because you don't steal. You don't get sick as much. Uh, mm -hmm. You can correlate that when you slip on the ice and you're surrounded by your best friends, you call your doctor. When you don't have any friends in the workplace, you slip on the ice, you call your lawyer and mm -hmm. you sue. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the outcomes, the business outcomes are just up and down. You don't leave. Right. You know, turnover is really expensive. Who, who leaves their friends? By definition, you don't leave your friends. Right. Uh, certainly right. not your best friends. Yep. So, so this is the one that we get, you know, Todd mentioned it earlier, this is the one we get the most pushback from organizations. And, you know, he, he mentioned oftentimes it's folks that don't have a best friend. Mm -hmm. uh, but they think it's too soft. And uh, so what, what, we do, what we say is, actually, we don't care that you feel that it's too soft. It's a metric. The data we, says. The yeah. data says <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. if you have a best friend at work uh, and, and an organization that has a lot of that across their entire uh, you know, uh, employee population, you are going to be a more productive, more successful organization. So all of the, the information is there that supports this. And so I think that's, you know, gosh, that's just, it's such a huge piece. It's a great uh, let's see. The other one that I wanted to hit was last seven days I received recognition or Praise for doing good work. Could you comment on Five, that? Five, yes. That? And I'll also say it's not eight days. It's not six days. It's seven days. And we all need, we all need recognition differently. Mm -hmm. uh, I know some people that have to have it really publicly. I just have a couple people that if they see I did a good thing somewhere, mm -hmm. that, that, that fuels me. I don't need the masses. Mm -hmm. I don't really need to hang things on the wall. Mm -hmm. I, I need <clears throat> one or two key people in the organization to know that, I moved the ball forward. Yep. And I did last week, and I, uh, you know, some email went around, and that felt really good. Yep, yep, uh, totally. I, I can totally relate to that. It, it's, you know, I think it's nice when they do give you formal recognition, and, and uh, you know, there's something said about that. But it is, it's that daily driver, so seven days, as opposed to, uh, you know, once a year we all get together and there's an award ceremony. 
if it's that granular and it's happening that frequently, yep. people stay much more energized and engaged around the work that they do on a daily basis, weekly basis, as opposed to that being evaluated once a year. Yep, yep, yep. All right, good. Yep. All right, so uh, I, I also ask in the in the other class, I ask about what was your, you know, what's a great day at work for you? What are you doing during the day for you to come, for you to, you know, for the day to just vanish in, yep. in, a, in a split second? You're like, well, where did my day go? This was such a great day. I love thinking about customers. I love finding new customers. I, I'm thrilled by talking to customers. Um, it really hurts me when, uh, even though we're kind of moving into a retail environment, I have an unhappy customer. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's bothering. Mm -hmm. uh, I, a lot of my customers are EP10 coaches. So I call them up and I ask them, you know, is our science being helpful to you? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Are ultimately are we helping businesses by getting talent as part of the conversation because mm -hmm. usually people are focused on technology or finance or something but um, it's really a great day when I've had a lot of either interaction with existing customers or been thinking about ways to mm -hmm. find new ones okay and let's think about uh, Todd's strengths again uh, everybody finds that energy in different ways but we know that Todd has both positivity and woo in his top five so uh, he interacts with his, his uh, clients as friends. Uh, right. You know, that's, that's really important for Todd, for him to be able to, to make that translation between this isn't just somebody that I'm calling up that I'm trying to sell to, but instead it's somebody that I'm actually engaged with and have a, have a legitimate relationship with. And I know, maybe there's some self-assurance there, no. but I know that if they can get talent as part of their you know, investment decisions. So mm -hmm. if I'm talking to an angel investor or venture capitalist, I know the science has validated that talent has an impact on success mm -hmm. or failure in business. We've mm -hmm. all interacted with people that shouldn't be in a sales role, shouldn't be in a service role. Should, same thing goes for entrepreneurship. So if we're helping them use our science, they're helping people uh, create better companies, create more jobs. So there's a lot of mission to it, but I know that mm -hmm. what we've got is good for them. They don't always know that. Right. So you got to spend time. And sometimes if they're not ready, um, you need to move on. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, yep. There's an old expression about a horse and water. Exactly. But, uh, yep. Okay. All right. That's good. And then uh, we also uh, want to talk just at least a little bit about uh, the uh, items on the Gallup-Purdue Index. Um, uh, all of my students are familiar with it. They've read the report. They've, cool. uh, they're actually asking the questions this week. So, you know, that's something that's, uh, uh, you know, part of, um, uh, you know, actually an assignment that they're working on this week. I wanted to, I, I, I'm going to simplify it. There are six questions that we found correlated with uh, that if students had these experiences when they were in college, then there was a much greater chance that once they graduated and had a job, that they would uh, be in, um, engaged in their work and they would have higher levels of uh, personal well-being. Yeah. So those are the two big things that we impacted with these six items. And they broke down into two categories. One was really relationships on campus. So it could have been a professor that made me excited about learning, a professor that I had for a mentor, uh, you know, somebody that made me care about you know, what I was learning about. Yeah. And then, uh, then the other category would be um, uh, uh, really more along the lines of campus involvement, activities that were involved in. I had an internship. Um, I um, was involved in, uh, you know, uh, intensely involved in campus activities for more than a semester. I had a job mm -hmm. that was associated with my major uh, for more than, you know, six months. So or something I like unloaded that. flowers from the flower district in New York, and I don't think that counts. Probably didn't count. <laughs> got yep. 100 bucks in cash. Yep, okay. yep, yep. And you're kind of, you know, doing the New York thing. And thanks, I got to so give my girlfriend cool. flowers all the time. Yeah. Had, yeah that, but okay. you, you shared a story about. So we can, we can approach this however you want to. You shared a story about uh, being a part of a, of a, a group that started uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters in Harlem. We did. We uh, did. Out of Columbia. Got students. Uh, the mantra in my high school was being a man for others. Mm -hmm. And I tried to take that into my college experience. And um, it was really important work. Mm -hmm. um, not every match was perfect. I was kind of the tough guy on the team that had to determine whether you were doing it just for your resume and I'd have none of that. So there were no resume builder patter types because mm -hmm. we're messing with lives. Wrong, but yeah, I mean, these are young, impressionable uh, kids. Uh, I worked with the schools to get permission and get all that stuff organized. Mm -hmm. And then I recruited uh, mm -hmm. big brothers and big sisters. And we'd go ice skating, you know, you, mm -hmm. they, they were allowed to stay the night in group settings. I mean, it was, it was just really rewarding. 
Um, so when you think about what Todd just talked about, it's it just a great story, Todd. Uh, but, but as you think about what he was talking about, you see his themes, right? There was the self-assurance that said I could go out and I could convince these, these, uh, the, the school systems to allow us to come in and have that relationship with, uh, uh, with the school districts. There was that woo and positivity of connecting with students and, and seeing that happen, too, as well as seeing other students from uh, Columbia connect with um, uh, you know, the children that were part of the program. So a lot of energy that was generated there. And my guess is, is that those were some of those inklings, you know, that somehow that was informing you about what you were good at and what you had the potential to maybe yep. leverage once you, mm -hmm. you know, were in a, in a career path. You also talked about a mentor that you had in high school. Yeah, I, uh, I had a, a set of teachers. Uh, I'll say their name, Virgin Patty Beckman. Mm -hmm. I just gave this a talk and spent a lot of time on them. I made some not perfect decisions during high school. Mm -hmm. I know that surprises you because we've been friends for a long time, yes. but there were not perfect decisions made as uh, yeah, they course. related to some of the rules. And so I got to spend a lot of time with these teachers, usually on Saturdays, mm -hmm. usually for a couple, three hours, for even a month at a time mm -hmm. in a row. Um, and they really helped me uh, think through the ramifications of my decisions as a teenage boy. Mm -hmm. And uh, not serious stuff, but I was just a teenage right. boy. <laughs> yep. And uh, and I'll never forget it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said to me at, when I finally did realize the incredible impact, and we're still friends today, um, uh, they've moved, but I stay in close touch with them. Um, they said, in terms of the pay it forward, get back involved. So I'm on, I just finished my six year board term. I helped raise a lot of money mm -hmm. for the school. I'm as involved as I can be. Obviously mm -hmm. sent my three boys there. Mm -hmm. I honored them because they honored me and my family back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, this keeps circling back around too, because uh, you know, when we, when we looked at uh, you know, overall life well-being, one of the categories that we measure is what we call social well-being and community well-being. And both of the things that Todd talked about are him, uh, you know, initiating activities that not only has a great purpose and a great outcome in terms of him helping his school and, and the school being better off, but it also helps Todd. And it helps Todd be a better dad and it helps Todd be a better employee. All of that stuff just kind of keeps circling around. Uh, Todd, if there's, uh, you know, one other thing that you would give as advice to, to the students uh, before we shut down here, what would it be? Understand who you are, understand who you aren't, <laughs> mm -hmm. and get, I, uh, one of our scientists taught me this once, I think it's brilliant, clinical depression is when your reality is too far away from your expectation. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, uh, I think it's great if you want to play professional basketball, but I'm here to tell you, Mr. Pogue, you don't have a lot of time left. And it's so just not going to happen, and I have just, to grow. Get, that's right, 56, there's, a, there's a couple of reasons right. not going to work, but I say that flippantly, you know, and I have to remind myself of this. Uh, do I want to be king of the world? Sure. Would I be a good king of the world? Sure. Is That might be an expectation that's just a little too far from my reality. Mm -hmm. the, the more you can hone in on what you do well, do more of it, and, and get comfortable in yourself. The other piece of philosophical advice I'd like to give, uh, now that I've got podium, mm -hmm. is when you make it a, a decision, uh, and this is what I told these high school boys a week ago, uh, make it the right one. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is only you're in control of making that decision the right one. I, I really am not a big fan of looking for excuses or victims or, you know, blaming it on the weather. Mm -hmm. You, whether it's, and these are important decisions, mm -hmm. life partners, schools, majors, jobs, don't blink, mm -hmm. make the right one, obviously with a strengths-based uh, methodology involved, and then go make it right, mm -hmm. you know? You gotta, you gotta put the work in. I think that's yeah. the other thing is that, you know, we, we, we've emphasized that to the students as well is that, you know, you, you don't get to those positive outcomes through your strengths without without there being work involved. It's, yep. it's, it's part and parcel. Would Winston Churchill say, never give in, never, never, never? Never, never, never. Love, never. Love that one. All right. Thanks for letting us stop yep. in on you. You bet. Thanks, Todd, for uh, sharing with us today. It's been awesome. Game on. All right, Gabe.